Kia ora. Hello. A few weeks ago, I received a new kettle helmet for my birthday. As I discussed in a recent video, the one that I chose was not that accurate, or my first choice. I have set about trying to make some alterations in the hope of at least changing the helmet from a mass-produced item to something that is closer to a period accurate item. This week, we're going to have a look at how I set about doing that and what alterations I made. Then, we'll have a discussion of how this compares to both extant and artistic representations, and see what I got right and what I need to improve for next time. I'm Andrew. And this is Popular Barnum, a channel where we discuss reenactment and the medieval middle class. The kettle helmet is known by many different names, either the kettle hat, the war hat, the chapelle de fer, or eisenhut, which translates to iron hat a unique style of helmet which was used for centuries. Both depictions and finds of this helmet changed during the centuries, yet the helmet is easily identifiable. It is this changing style that I really want to address here, and what I'm trying to achieve when I'm making adjustments on my helmet. To give some context of what I am trying to recreate, let me briefly discuss my impression. Currently, I'm building an impression of a militia captain from Ghent in 1390. But I've also found myself wanting to explore a lower class militiaman from time to time. This helmet is part of that foundation. The same place and time, just a different role. Before we go on, I want to say I really enjoyed this project. It allowed me to experiment with a few ideas that I've had for a while. Not all of them planned out the way that I had hoped, but that is half the fun. Moving on, let's have a look at what I had said about the helmet before I made the alterations. There are a few different alterations that I need to do to make this helmet in line with a period helmet. I'll put a nice curve on the brim and see if I cannot bring the sides down more to give it the shape more in line with a 14th century helmet. Finally, I'll make a new liner. I might trim down the crown a bit and change the style of the rivets. We'll see. Here's the finished piece. I shaped the brim and pulled it down more. Sadly, this was the best I could do with my limited tools in my tiny workshop. I put a slight crease in the front and back, following the crease in the crown. Working the brim had a benefit of work hardening the steel, which should be pressed into shape. Not that I intend to use this for combat. As an aside, any mild steel helmets I buy, I prefer to plenish to work harden as soon as I can. The original had a black chrome tan strap with rough square buckles. There was a black cotton liner filled with a dense padding of unknown origin. I stripped all this out, even down to taking out the rivets. In the end, I did not cut down the crown. This was mainly because the brim and the crown were welded together, and I could not be bothered doing that extra work. Should I have? Probably. Now you know the basics, let's talk details. The liner was fairly easy to make. I copied the existing liner dimensions and made mine out of five layers of quilted linen. Not my usual linen lined with cotton padding, as we have done in our other liner videos. Was there any special reason to change the way I constructed this liner? I was experimenting to see how this would perform as a garment versus cotton lining. I find that the layered linen is much heavier and lacks the flexibility of the cotton. That is to be expected. Linen is stiffer fabric. Still, it does the job and I doubt I will change it. This was sewn onto a leather band which was riveted onto the inside of the helmet. I've also replaced the chin strap which the helmet came with. While it did have a buckle, instead I've replaced it with this leather fastening, which you see on Latchet's shoes for the period. More on that later. I made the chin strap and the internal leather band separate pieces because that is how the manufacturer made theirs. But it was only after I finished sewing this helmet all up, I realized that this could have been made as one piece. <laughs> oh well. More importantly, the straps are Y-shaped to distribute the balance of the helmet in multiple points to sew to stop it from rocking backwards and forwards on my head. The strap does not need to be done up too tight 
just tight enough to stop the helmet being flung off in the event of a forceful blow. So, have I done a good job in recreating a late 14th century kettle helmet? How does this stand up to both art and extant examples? First, it must be said that the kettle helmet from the late 14th century is starting to be made in one piece. While there is two pieces consisting of the crown and brim, there is some art which could be interpreted to show these as separate. However, the few surviving helmets from this period are one piece. The other issue is that we have the kettle helmet is notorious hard to date. These images here show helmets with similar shapes with a high crown and a low brim. The earliest depicted is from the 1370s. It shows high crowns. As the dates progress, the helmets are depicted with a point and a medial crease on the crown. There is a corresponding crease in the brim on these helmets. I've attempted to implement this into the alterations on my helmet. We also can look at two helmets that have been dated from around this period. The first dated between 1375 to 1400. And this one dated around 1400, both with wildly different shapes, the second more in line with what I have attempted to achieve. The next part of the discussion is the chin strap. How does this fit into the overall depiction and interpretation of the kettle helmets? Let's look at the art and discuss how I came to my conclusions. Our first image is from 1230. We see a three point harness on the strap for the helmet. Moving forward 14 years later to 1244, the Masiewski Bible has glass helmet with a Y strap. And then fast forwarding 116 years to the future to 1350, we see a chin strap on both these helmets. Finally, on this image from France dated 1380, we see three chin straps being depicted on this image. When we look over to the two on the right, Closely, we see the excess leather is round around the strap as if it is thin instead of the use of buckles. As we do not see any other detailed depictions of the fastening of chin straps, I've used this interpretation for my helmet. So, do I think all kettle helmets had chin straps? No, there is not sufficient evidence to support this. Do I think all chin straps had no buckle and instead were held in this arrangement? Not at all. In fact, it could be that the way that I have decided to fasten mine is a guess. It may be a case of two tapered straps tied under the chin. Either way, it is possible at this stage. All is conjecture. How these were laced is not depicted. At least I have not found any evidence to support any one way. Though I am starting to get an idea of a best method, and I suspect the way I have tried is not the best solution, and I might go back and revisit this. Overall. How do I think I did? If I think about it, trying to make this more accurate to the period and reducing the reproduction look, I would say I did an alright job, but not great. There are still a lot of things about this helmet that are glaringly anachronistic, but the goal was to bring this closer to a period helmet as possible, not to make an accurate reproduction, because if I did that, I'd have an accurate reproduction. One day I might buy or make an accurate one, but for now, I'm happy with what I have. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think there is still room for improvement? What do you think I could do differently? There's still more that I want to cover on the topic of kettle helmets, however. I just don't have the time to do it in this video, so expect more content on kettle helmets to come. As usual, we will want to look at the parts of medieval history that are often not examined and discussed. Finally, a huge shout out to the folks on the Discord for their help with researching this one, both with reference pictures and general discussion on interpretation of the art. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Means you must have enjoyed the video. So like, comment and subscribe. And remember, stay safe, have fun, and keep reenacting.